How many of you have a leader? Y'all don't have a leader? What's wrong with y'all? Oh, uh, you used to have one. God said, a grapevine planted away from the Father has no vitality. It will be torn up by its roots and will perish. A grapevine planted away from the Father has no vitality. It will be torn up by its roots and will perish. I've noticed that with some Christians, uh, even with preachers and reverends and pastors, they believe that you should have another preacher over you or you should go to school to learn it. But they believe that you should have another leader over you. And I wanted to t today to get rid of that idea. Anyone who has a human being over him is a weak, pathetic person. And they have been separated from God. Because whomever is over you is standing between you and God. Now, if a woman is married, of course, her husband is over her, but he represents Christ, so she is safe. But if she's not married, then God, Christ is over her, as, as he is with, with men. But there are a lot of teaching out there that has been, where you've been told that, you know, you need a leader. And I've noticed over the years where people, they seem to love a physical leader. They really get into the leader. They really just worship them. And I was watching that Jim Jones thing last night, uh, the biography on, on Jim Jones. Remember Jim Jones? And it was interesting the way he was brought up, but he ended up encouraging like 900 or so people to commit suicide. He actually convinced them that they could do it. And he had them calling him daddy. He had, he had them doing some weird stuff because they had become, he had become their God. He literally convinced them that he was God. And I'm thinking, wow, this is so interesting. But I want you to know that you're not supposed to have it. I'm not a leader. I don't want to be a leader. I don't want to be over nobody, anyone, because people are crazy. Why would I even want that? I don't want anybody addicted to me. It's a headache. And when they're addicted to you, they turn on you, they'll destroy you. At least they'll try. But you don't want that. I got some examples of what happens when you have a leader. And it starts early in life where, as children, Somebody stand between us and God. Someone does. When you're a child, the mother is standing between you and your father, keeping you away from your father. So she become your leaders. That's why we become like her, because we become like whomever we worship, whomever we believe into. Um, we have the um, organization. You have preachers. You have like... The NAACP, the, the so-called civil rights leaders, are a good example of standing between the blacks and God. I remember prior to the civil rights movement, black people, for the most part, believed in God. They did not believe in leaders. I didn't grow up. I had never even heard that someone can lead you like this until I was 18 and the whole civil rights movement was going on and stuff like that. And that's when blacks start to trust the preachers and trust the black leaders. And if you notice, 60 years later or so, they live in hell, pure hell, because they've been cut off from God. They were cut off in the home, and then they're cut off with the outside leaders. And whatever these people tell them, and 99.999% of the time is all lies, because once you control somebody, you have to lie to them. You have to lie to them. And so the civil rights leaders are standing between black people. Not all, not all, not all, but most. And that's why when you try to tell them the truth, they get angry. Or if you tell them their, their leadership is wrong, your leadership is wrong, they want to attack you and protect the leadership because the leader is the God. They absolutely are addicted to that. That's their God because they stand between those people stand between the person and God. Another example is um, over the years, I've had so many preachers ask me, 
Well, who is your pastor? Who is over you? Where do you get your teaching from? And that's, to me, that's so insane. I, I would be embarrassed to ask someone that. Because who is telling this preacher to tell this preacher what God would have him do or say? And why would God go to this preacher? Hey, come here, John, let me tell you something. I want you to go to a preacher so-and-so and let them know this. Why will not God speak right through you? God is in all of us. The Holy Spirit is there. And he can direct you just like that. I would not, I, I, I don't want you to look to other people for the things that God, we have in us the Holy Spirit. And if you have another leader over you, I was talking to a, a guy, well, several guys this week after our men's meeting. And some of the guys were telling me how when they got married or they got involved with a woman, they went into her world. And so she became their leader and screwed them up. Anytime a human being is over you, you're going to get messed up. You're going to lose your way. You'll find yourself doing things that you never imagined that you would do. And that is because that person that stands between you and God is your God. And any man who has anyone else standing between he and God is a pathetic person. Because you represent Christ, and the only head that you should have is Christ. No other human being. When we fellowship together, we are a witness to one another. You are no different than I am. I come because I want to bring a message, and I come to receive one. We are to, we edify one another by being a, um, a witness. It's the witness in us that witness to the witness in you, and it wakes up, and then we go out and be the light of the world. We are not supposed to have a leader. So if you find yourself addicted to a human being, you need to break it some kind of way. Go into prayer or something, because you are not yourself. You're not seeing things straight. No other human being should ever be, a, be over you. Now, we have managers. You work for a job, you're going to have a boss. You know what I'm saying? That's not a leader of your life. The president is not the leader of your life. He is working for you as the leader of the United States, carrying out the orders that we want him to protect us, make sure that whatever he's supposed to do, build roads and be quiet. <laughs> But you're not supposed to have a leader. But from birth, it starts with mama and dad, between daddy, and so on and so on. And most people live their lives never being free from a physical leader. And they'll quote the Bible, they'll go to church, they'll lift up holy hand, they, all that kind of stuff. Read the Bible and quote the scripture until the cows come home. And yet, some human being stand between them and God. And so I have no leader. I don't go to anybody and ask them, what would God help me to do or say? And I think I've kind of always been that way. Even as a kid, I used to get in trouble because I wanted to do my own thing, you know. But I just, I don't understand. I understand it because I've seen it happen. But I don't understand how another human being can let themselves, well, I understand it. I'm lying when I say I don't understand it. But I'm just saying I don't understand just for the sake of me saying something. <laughs> but I do understand it. And so if you have a leader, uh, you need to let him go, him or her go. Meaning separate yourself from that leader because you're never going to return to your father. Uh, you're, gonna, you're like that grapevine that's been disconnected from the father because it's God who gives us life and energy. He provides for us. Um, we have the Holy Spirit inside of us to teach us all things, to inform us, to perfect us. But if any no, another human being is standing between you and that, you're not being perfected by the Holy Spirit. You're being destroyed by the leader that stands between you and God, even if it's your mother. If you haven't gotten over your mother turning you away from your father, you still screwed up. You're not connected to, you're, you're the great mind, and you're not connected to the Father, and you're never going to have a life. You're dying because you're not getting the life source that gives his life. You're dying. That's why, look how messed up the world is. And everybody always looking for a leader. 
They could be in one program, and, they, and it might be working for them, but they hear about another one, and they'll run to that one. And then that, they'll wear that one out, take, you know, waste their time, and then they'll hear about something else, they run to another one. And then they hear about something, they're constantly on the run, looking for something, and another human being that you're never going to find. Because it's already inside of you. I can't even imagine having a leader. When I first saw that was when I started Bond about 27 years ago. And a good friend helped me get rolling. And I got a chance to meet some of the people that have been sitting on it, on it, this friend of mine. And it was the craziest thing I ever seen. I had never seen anything like that. It was like mind blowing. At first, I didn't know what was going on coming from Alabama. I had never seen anything like that before. The sand, or the action, everything was the same. And it wasn't from God. And the leader used to say, I, I wish these people wouldn't do this. He would tell you, don't follow me. Don't, you know, I'm not the source. And they would do it anyway. It's crazy. But it can happen to you, I guess, and you not even know that it's going on. That's why I want to warn you. You don't want a human leader over you. A preacher is not your leader. He is there to point. If he's not pointing you back to the God that's inside of you, he is your enemy. He is your enemy. He or she, because now you have women acting like they're preachers. But if they're not pointing you back to the God that's in you, you need to cut it out. Because you're going to spend a lifetime, and you can look all up and down this earth, and you're not going to find it. It's inside of you. It's not in another group. It's not in another church. It's not in another whatever. It's inside of you. And that's what a priest is supposed to do. He's not supposed to teach you. Let no man teach you. The Holy Spirit will teach you all things. Look how messed up the people who have gone to school, the university, just as mentally ill as they come. Have you noticed that? Yeah, and they've been taught. They're going against. See, God's ways are so simple and easy. His ways are so simple. They're nothing like what the world is teaching us. If you never saw a university, you could still survive in life in a, in a better way. You do better, to be honest with you, because you'll follow what's inside of you and not the intellect. But don't let anyone be your leader. How many people understand what I'm saying? Oh, good. Anybody ever experienced that, having a leader? Oh, you have? Let me hear right here. Yeah, I just didn't know what I know now, and I would believe in a person or an organization, like you said, and think this is my identity, and this is where I'm going to find my satisfaction and happiness. And eventually, <clears throat> that grapevine lets you down yeah. because it's not the truth, and it's a lie. Plus, because it's a human being, and at some point, that human being going to do something or say something that you don't like and don't agree with, agree with, and that's when it's over. Because human beings make mistakes along the way. They can be playing around with you. You'll take it seriously because you, that human being is your God, and now God is disappointed. You can't, you got to be, anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. No, that's it. I was just going to say exactly what you said, you know, um, Eventually, something is wrong. Yeah. Because like you said, you have to lie to someone if you control them. Because people aren't gods. There's only one God. Only one. So you're going to listen to lies after lie. And eventually, you're going to catch on that they're lies. Yes. And then you're going to be like, I've been lied to. <laughs> I feel betrayed. And that's that feeling that like your God has let you down. And you want to go find another one because you're playing God. I'm going to make this thing of the world make me happy. I'm going to make this thing of the world make me happy until it's let go. Have you, uh, so when you were in that condition, did you know you had believed? Absolutely that not. Made, You didn't know it? No, I was just like, I couldn't believe that that person or that organization did that to me <laughs> because I'm good and they were good. What, I, I don't want to get, I'm just lost and <laughs> right. upset. I don't get it. Wow. Uh, when I was growing up, I had never heard anything like, even with the preachers, we didn't, we weren't into the preacher. We went to church, the preacher preached, we hoop and holler, and we laugh. And if the preacher messed up, we got rid of the preacher. You know, get rid of him. But if he had been into the preacher, we would not have gotten rid of him. It's only lately that blacks have been into preachers. Like Al Shopton kind of a guy. Who, who could follow Al Shopton? 